Good morning everyone, my name is Clay Herger. I'm the lead instructor and owner of ATX Precision here in Austin, Texas. This morning we're sitting in Sportsman's Finest to film a segment on ballistic applications and software. My goal is to give you a basic understanding of how to set them up and how to use them in the field. Ballistic apps have become a foundational part of Precision Rifle. Uh, they're a big piece of the sport, uh, both hunting, competition, or just shooting, as well as our curriculum. You know, it's grown into its own standalone class. We get lots of questions on this subject. So today I want to kind of break that down, unpack a few of the concepts on how to get started with some apps uh, with two of them that I use. Just to run through some of the things that, uh, that Ballistic Arc will do for you, you know, it's a very good, good app. When people ask me, hey, cut to the chase, what app do you use? Uh, it's kind of a trick question. I always use two apps. We're going to go through both of them. Ballistic Arc is the first one that I use. Okay. So just like most apps, you go in, you set up a rifle profile with Ballistic Arc. You set up the rifle profile with your ammo. Come back over, you set up your weather, your weather profile. You tell it what your parameters that you're shooting in. You can sync it up via Bluetooth with either a Kestrel or a weather flow meter or you can have it download the nearest nearest airport weather station uh, if you've got your location services on. Once that's done, you can come over here to the different modes. I default to the chart mode, pretty simple, pretty user friendly. Uh, you give it the location, what your shot angle is if you're shooting up or down, like in the hills, uh, your shot bearing, that's your actual compass bearing that you're shooting, and then of course the range. This gives you a chart form. You can tell it what increments you want it in. You want it in every 25 yards. In my case, I like it every 10 yards. Uh, I have a threshold, an energy threshold set up. You can set up a different, couple different thresholds in there, but in this case, you're looking at 790 yards. It hits that 1,000 foot-pounds of energy threshold, so that's what you're looking at on the screen there. Okay. One of the other modes you can go into, and this is what I think is one of the more powerful features of this, this app, it overlays on Google Earth imagery. So you can come in, you can drop a pin as the shooter, you can move over some and drop a pin as your target. It tells you what the yards are, what your bearing is there. You tap on that pin, it gives you your, your elevation correction and your windage based off the, the weather data that you've already sent it. Okay, these are pretty handy. One of the things I really like is you can get a chance to look at the terrain that you're shooting over. This helps you refine, hey, what is that wind doing out there? What am I about to get into with this shot? You can change the profile. Again, it, it works just like Google Earth because that's what it's overlaid on. Another fun thing you can do with this, you can get a look at some of the general topographical data, all right, if you like that format, uh, or you can come back over to the imagery style format. Very powerful tool, in my opinion, uh, especially if you're on, say, a hunt in some unfamiliar territory. You're setting up for a shot. Uh, what am I shooting across? Because uh, a lot of times, especially in mountainous terrain, you don't know what you're shooting across because all the terrain looks the same. Okay, so that's our map mode. The other mode is our competition mode. Uh, one of the fun things that these guys do with us, the Ballistic Art folks, and, and we'll have their website up there for you, Last year for our, our big two-day PRS style precision rifle match, they created a, an electronic matchbook for us. First time we had ever done that, it was a lot of fun. Once we gave the match brief, then all the competitors were able to download every shooting position and every target into their app. All right, so let's, let's take stage five, for example. As soon as they get to stage five, they see right where they are, they come over and they tap on the targets, gives them their dope or they can come over to stage five and look at it with the competition mode. It tells them in the order they have to shoot it. Hey, target one, here's your data that you need to dial in. Target two, target three. It's even got this holdover data where, hey, you know what, I seem to be trending a little high or low. The last two or three stages, you can put that in. Saves them a little bit of time as they, as they pull this down and either commit it to memory or if they're writing it down on, say, a wrist coach or uh, some kind of memory aid, uh, but it pulls all that data right out for them. So very powerful feature uh, that, that Geoballistics has for the competitor as well as the hunter. The second app that I like to use is Applied Ballistics. Applied Ballistics 
they have been the gold standard for a long time. Uh, if you haven't heard Brian Litz, he's, he was a, an Air Force ballistician. Now he works for Berger Bullets as well as his own independent company, Applied Ballistics. A lot of the data that most of your apps out there are based off of his research and his actual lab measurements on ballistic coefficients and bullets. Uh, he's got a wealth of knowledge on his website, which will show up there. A lot of good articles uh, to read into. Uh, and, and thankfully, you know, he dispelled a lot of the old rumors and sort of rules of thumb that we learned even back at sniper school. Uh, you know, he took those and said, hey, let's, let's put some science behind this and see if this is true. And in some cases, we were actually 180 to 80 degrees out from reality uh, as far as what we were memorizing as far as a rule in the field. So he's done a ton for the pre precision rifle world. Uh, and his app was one of the first ones that we adopted in our schoolhouse to use every day on the line. So very powerful, very powerful solver. Both of them are incredibly accurate. I would say the only difference between the two is the output and input. Do they match with the way you like to see output and of course input your own data. But similar to applied ballistics, you come in here, you create a rifle profile. Now different from applied ballistics, you actually create ammo profiles separate from the rifle. So in this case, we, cr we created one rifle, I picked it, and now I've got four different ammo profiles to pick from. We'll just choose this one. Your next screen that comes up, your environmental data, you look through that, you enter in what it is you're shooting in, atmospheres, wind speed, if you want spin drift turned on or if you want Coriolis effect turned off. As you can see, I typically turn on spin drift, I turn off Coriolis effect, uh, unless I'm getting out way beyond a thousand yards. Uh, the discussion on that's a little beyond this video, but, but just know that's, that's how I generally set up. Now, your output, for applied ballistics, you, you've got two different choices here. In the top right corner, uh, you've got that circle. We'll tap on that. That's your head-up display output. Pretty simple. Hey, it, it goes to the max yard line that you told it to, 800 yards in this case. Wind, we had five miles an hour out of the nine o'clock direction, 270. Gives us our correction, elevation, in, elevation and windage in minutes. For us on the line, this is pretty handy. You know, if, we, if we've got some new students that need data, they're all shooting similar, similar rifles and cartridges, but they're in different scope units. You can swipe right or left and it converts those from minutes to mils for you, or inches per hundred yards too, if, if you use that. All right, very powerful tool. A lot of folks like the head-up display style. Come up to the top, you can hit that reticle button for the 800 yards. It tells you if you don't touch your dials at all, where do you need to hold it? All right, it's got a pretty decent reticle library in it. In this case, uh, I've got a Night Force reticle loaded in there, so that's what you're looking at on that screen. But it tells you where where to hold if you don't want to touch your dials. Okay, the other output screen, and this is the one that I primarily use myself. I like the chart mode. Good old-fashioned chart there. You can have it count up or count down on the yardage. I like it to go from from farthest closer to closer. So I start off on that max range. Uh, range, your elevation correction, windage correction based off what you entered in there, your velocity, energy, time of flight. Just like the other screen, you can go down, look at your reticle, and it tells you what each of your stadia lines correspond to. Uh, as far as yardage. This might be helpful for some folks in like a hunting environment, don't want to touch their dial. All right, how far can I go out? Let's say out to 300 yards. Yep, that, uh, that number four reticle line down there, that gives me 300. So, you know, if you're a hunter, you could think, okay, I don't need to touch my dial if it's, if it's within those. Might be useful uh, to some folks out here. The other thing you've got, you've got this graph. I, I really honestly don't use this a whole lot, but it will allow you to compare you know, a couple of your different loads if you want to see, okay, which one, which one's uh, holding in the wind a little better or holding its velocity a little better. But honestly, I'm, I'm, I don't use the graph a whole lot, but some folks might find that, that really useful. Again, my, my biggest bang for the buck is on, on the table, table format. Okay. That's a quick overview of these two. We work with, with a few others. We like Ballistic Advanced Edition. We also use Hornady's new app as well. Uh, we just don't have time to, to dive really deep into those. But in our, our schoolhouse, we do dig into all four of those apps. 
Right now is a great time to be a precision rifle shooter. Uh, the app's very accurate if you give it good data. It gives you good output. Uh, it just depends what do you like your output data in. What do you like to receive your information in? Do you like it in the head-up display style? Do you like it in the map style? Competition style? There's a lot of choices for you as the shooter out there. Thanks for watching, folks. Uh, for our next segment, we're going to walk you through how to set up applied ballistics from start to finish. So navigate over to that site. Join us there.